So, you know this one already, you know, you have two main types of learning, the classical conditioning, that is by uh, Pavlov's experiment, diba? the unconditional stimulant and the conditioned stimulant. No? You can see that uh, here, uh, learning, for example, the dog. Uh, the dog there was, uh, there was a first belling, you know, there was a bell, and after that bell, uh, they will, the dog will be given food. So, until such time when there is no more be bell, that the dog expected that uh, he will be given food. Be enough belly. Classical conditioning. Ah, yes. So, uh, even if the sound of a bell, the, the, the dog had salivation already. Because he understand that after the ringing of the bell, there will be food. Oh. So, the bell was the, the one that would uh, give the idea of the dog that the bell will follow the the food can a uh, food will follow yeah. then you, you have your operant conditioning your operant conditioning is the mice here or the mouse was uh, walking inside the cage and suddenly he he tapped a button and the button uh, there came out the different the food in uh, inside in his uh, cottage or in his uh, house that is operant conditioning but he was not taught the the mouse or the mice was not taught suddenly uh, it was so sudden and uh, he just found out when he when he touched that button there was food that is operant conditioning like in in your example in classical conditioning for example when you do good you are high in school, you will pass, you will be given great amount of money. No, that is classical conditioning. So you expect that. But however, there was a time when your mother will not give you that much, that amount of money. So, but you learn that in everything, in every good grades that you get, you will be given money. That is classical conditioning. No? Operant conditioning is you try to, to, for example, if you will follow your mother, you will, he told you to do things, to get an errand. So uh, you follow, when you follow, so you will, you did not know that he will uh, bring you to other place until such time that Suddenly, when you follow you know, what he said or she said, you were given uh, a reward. That is an operant conditioning. So it just happened and you did not expect it. Like the mice, when he tapped the button, there was food coming. So from your parents also, that's uh, as I have said, uh, he just asked uh, something from you and suddenly he gave you some uh, reward or other aspect of uh, giving you uh, enjoying things or in other places in uh, exchange of what he asked you. So you can hear, you can see here classical conditioning and operant conditioning. So as I've said, classical conditioning, there is unconditioned stimulus and there is conditioned stimulus. No? Then involuntary behavior elicited by stimulus. Conditioned stimulus, when, when the bell is rung, so you already, you already know that you will be given. Like when you're going to school, when you have a good grade, so automatic that you will try to to, to learn, you will have good grades. 
So positive reinforcer, rewards, or something desirable is received after a behavior of course. Negative reinforcer, escape, or something undesirable is avoided after a behavior of course. So it depends. So uh, you have positive reinforcer, you have given rewards. Negative reinforcer, you are being uh, punished. That is the reinforcement in learning. So we go to now mental health, normality and mental health. So you can see that Normality refers to patterns of behavior. Normality refers to patterns of, this is normality and mental health, no? So normality refers to patterns of behavior or personality traits that are typical. So what are your typical behavior? You can see that uh, as expected, no? Sometimes it is very easy to distinguish what is normal and what is abnormal. At other times, it is harder to make this decision. So now it, we have a new normal. But we will be talking the, before the normality, the normal, no? So what is normal behavior? It is expected that we have to respect our parents. That is the normality. That is our behavior. No? Uh, but as we uh, later, we try to kiss the hands of our parents to say good morning. But when, as the years go by, no, as the time goes by, so sometimes we do not practice that anymore. So it is very easy to distinguish what is normal and what is abnormal. So sometimes you cannot say, oh, the children does not anymore say good morning to their parents. So at other times, it is harder to make this decision. Whether to follow the normal that we had before or to follow what you have seen from your parents, from your friends, no? That's why uh, it is very easy to distinguish what is normal and what is normal but it is harder to make this decision, especially nowadays, no? So, the different behaviors, no? Uh, which are normal and which are abnormal. So, it depends on the person. Being scared of her spiders, enjoying skydiving. So, it depends. These are situations. Wearing black makeup and clothing, is it normal for you? It is not normal for you? So it depends. So that, that's why it is a difficult decision, no? Walking arm in arm down the street with a friend of the same sex. So for you, it would be normal or not normal, no? So sometimes you will say, uh, does it matter? Who are they? It's not my obligation to tell them who am I, no? Then you are being in love with someone you have never met. So is it normal for you or not normal? So it's, di it's difficult to decide, no? Preferring to live alone or isolate from others. So for you, is it normal or not normal? So it depends. There are many. That's why it's very difficult to decide, no? Normality is often defined as a pattern of thought. Huh? Feelings or behavior that conform to a usual, typical, or expected standard. So these are norms of society. Before we have norms to follow, 
against the norms, it becomes abnormal. But the normal for us is the norms of the society. But it seems now it becomes, it changes already. No? Before it is standard, but the standard before is not the standard now. You can kiss each other on the jitney, di ba? But before it was not. It's not. No? It should not be followed. But now it's different. That's why it's very difficult to decide whether to follow the normal before or the normal that we have now. No? Abnormality may be defined as a pattern of thought, feelings or behavior that are deviant, distressing, and dysfunctional. So abnormality means it is not goes with the normality, with the standards. It is deviant. It feels you feel distressed. No? So my friends are kissing each other, but I cannot do that. No? So it is an abnormality. No? So you have deviant, distressing, and dysfunctional. Thoughts, feelings, and behavior are considered deviant when they differ or vary so markedly. No? From social or cultural norms, governing behavior that they can reasonably or legally be considered inappropriate or unacceptable. No? So deviant meaning say it differ. When they differ or vary so markedly from social or cultural norms. So when it, uh, it does not follow with our social or cultural standards, for us it is deviant. No? It's inappropriate. It is unacceptable. Distressing when they are unpleasant and upsetting to the person experiencing them and or others around them. So distressing, it is on the person. Whether you feel not pleasant to what your friends are doing, you are with them, diba? Right? So they said before that you know, uh, birds of the same feathers flock together. You know? But it depends on you already. That is distressing for you. But it seems now it's not already, you no? Know? Dysfunctional if they are interfere with the person's ability to carry out their usual daily activities in an effective way. Meaning to say dysfunctional when uh, what you are doing uh, is not the daily activities that is effective. For example, you keep on going out, you do not study, that is not, that is dysfunctional, no? Distressing, unpleasant to you. Dysfunctional, not effective. You are doing, not, you are going out, you do not study, that is dysfunctional. No? According to World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of you. So meaning to say, when we say health, it compass, encompasses social, mental, and physical. It does not only reflect your physical. You are healthy. You do not have something that you feel not good. But however, it also uh, goes with mental. You cannot sleep well. No, that is also health. Social meaning to say if you cannot interact well with others, that is social well-being. So if what is not is absent, that is not health. Because health comprises the physical, mental, and social well-being. Okay? Then illness refers to a person's subjective experience of feeling unwell in relation to one or more aspects of their health and including the way they think about their physical, mental, and social health. So if you do not feel well, so that is illness. No, It is subjective. No? It is your own who feels that, uh, whether physically, mentally, or socially. Physical well-being primarily involves the body and uh, exercising, eating well, so that is physical. Mental, mind, you know, when you cannot go to sleep, when you are sad, you express your feelings, 
social well-being involves your interpersonal relationship. Differentiating mental health from mental illness. Mental health and mental illness primarily involve the mind whereas physical health and physical illness primarily involve the body. So it is very explainable, no? Mind, psychological. Mental health is the capacity of an individual to interact with others and the environment in ways that promote subjective well-being, optimal development throughout the lifespan, and effective use of a person's cognitive, emotional, and social well-being. So, when we say mental health, is that it does not only uh, follow that only for our thinking, no, but also our intelligence, also our psychological well-being, our emotional well-being, or our interrelation that is a part of mental health. Characteristic of good mental health include being able to establish and maintain positive social relationship and to cope effectively with problems and issues that arise in every day. So meaning to say, when we have a good mental health, we can think positively, we can have a good social relationship, we can cope up with problems and issues in day-to-day -day living. That is mental health. Not only that you can think well, no. Even if you can think well, if you cannot have a good relationship with your friends, with your peers, that is not a mental health. No, that is not a good mental health. If you cannot solve problems, you can just keep on crying you know, and other issues. That is not mental health. Good mental health. No? So mental health, that is in, it encompasses psychological dysfunction. How you feel, no? Day-to-day uh, -day life, no? This function means that the person does not think, feel well or behave as they normally do and it affects their ability to cope effective with everyday life experiences. So this function, when you cannot anymore cope, you cannot think well, you are indecisive, no? You are anxious that you cannot control. It's normal to be anxious, but if you cannot control anymore, that is not, that is already a dysfunction. That's already a problem. It's not already a good mental health. You cannot cope with your life, everyday life, no? That's a mental problem. You cannot do things normally as you did before. No? So that is already mental problem. So what is stress? It is exposure to stressful situation and events. It's a common to human experience. Uh, it ranges from hassle to a traumatic and overwhelming experience. When we are faced with a stressful situation, this is usually caused by stressor. A stressor is in any person, situation, or event that produces stress. So when we say stressor, stressor may be a person, a situation, or event. A person, you do not like that person. You cannot, you cannot explain why you do not like. So it seems it's a stressor for you. How much more if you are being bullied, no? So that stressor. Situation. Situation, for example, your, your class, you cannot understand. No, you cannot go to class. You do not have your laptops. Like here, your, your Wi-Fi is very low. So that is stressor. Events. For example, events that you cannot attend your classes, you cannot go to your school because you have you still have vast amount of tuition fee to be paid off. That is event, no? So stressor may be physical, temperature, loud noise, psychological, you're changing school. For example, you are commerce and you will go to Medicine, that is psychological. <clears throat> then you have internal. 
within the organism inside you cannot explain why you are stressed inside only small thing you seem to be stressed external that is outside no? so it is unpleasant state of physiological and psychological tension physiological meaning to say there are changes in your body sometimes you keep on going to the cr keep on go urinating that is uh, physiological psychological you are anxious that is psychological tension no so you cannot cope that anymore so it affect different individuals in different ways so uh, it depends on the individual and it affects in different ways. Some individual can accept, some cannot. No? So that's why you cannot compare yourself to others. Sometimes others would say, I can't handle this problem. Why, it, why is it that she cannot handle problem? So because it's different individuals have different ways in handling your stress. So how can you respond? So there are different responses. You can even see that <clears throat> you have nausea, you are biting your nails, you even have some, you just want to go to sleep. That is stress reaction response. Sleeping is also one you just keep on sleeping, no? That is a response of stress. So you have mild stress, you have acute stress. Acute means new, no? You have chronic, means old stress. Uh -huh. So, behavioral changes, emotional changes, and cognitive changes. You see that behavioral, the way a person looks, strained facial expression, shaky voice, muscle spasm, emotional anxiety, tension, angry, cognitive. Uh -huh. So, you cannot think well, your perception is distorted. You cannot answer. No, it's very difficult for you. Huh? So you have different psychological responses. No? You're, you try to adjust. You are being motivated. No, You, you try to uh, elevate your self-esteem. You, know? you, you try to uh, physically uh, Change your outlook in life, no, even your way of dressing, no. Panakit butas, no. I have so many problems, but you want to feel good, but inside you are very stressed, no. So stress is a subjective experience that depends on how we interpret a stressor and also our own perception of our ability to cope. So it depends on us, no. Whether we can cope, some others cannot cope. No? So you have social, cultural, and environmental factors that influence the stress. No? So stress is influenced by social factor, by your friends, by your peers, culture, so so many things. No? Social stress include relationship. Loneliness, feeling of isolation, breaking up of your boyfriend or girlfriends because your boyfriend is another girlfriend. He is uh, having some, uh, what you call that, uh, secrets of being together. Oh, that is social. Oh. Social adjustment refers to the amount of change in lifestyle so social adjustment, it depends. Sometimes you will say, even if you, if you look for another girl, I will look for another boy. So that's social factor. That is your social adjustment. So you adjust your lifestyle. Of course you have to adjust your lifestyle in order for you to, to live, to not become insane, to rationalize, no? Cultural factors. Sometimes you just uh, uh, transfer from one place to another. You stay in another area. It's difficult for you. Language. That's very difficult. No. Their uh, what you call their belief. It's very difficult. That is cultural factors. No. It's 
So I've said language, belief, you can see that, no? Environmental factors, of course, when the, the, the place that you are living is crowding, loud noise, no? You are living in another country, no? It's very cold, that's environmental factors. Okay, so that's the end of our lecture. So we have learning theory, PIAJ is normal, uh, cognitive development, and normality and mental health. I will just send to you later the, uh, what you call that, the soft copy. Okay? Ah, we will send it now. Okay? Okay, the Okay, Doc. Okay, Doc. So we will not talk up with yeah, tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it will just be with your bi-monthly. You just tell me with our subsequent uh, lectures so that uh, I will, we will see, we will meet physically with your first quiz and your bi-monthly.